नमस्ते टू एवरीवन नमस्ते शर्मला जी दी गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन जी नमस्ते तारा प्रसन्ना जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यूएचवी 3 एंड इन यूएचवी 3 वी आर ऑन लेक्चर 17 वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ कोएग्जिस्टेंस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द फोर ऑर्डर्स ऑफ नेचर एंड we've talked about this chart in depth earlier also yesterday again we had discussion about this so even the next lecture is going to be about some detail about the four orders so yesterday we had given this assignment which was similar to the assignment the previous day that we need to look at these four orders reflect on them and see how the coexistence is ever expressive it is slowly evolving or unfolding and you can see this unfolding happen in the four orders as you see this you also see that when the self associates with the body with the animal body it is having rudimentary activities in it just uh, largely selecting tasting because it is totally identified with the body and has the ability to have this experience of the sensation through the body so with that sensation through the body and the total identification with the body the animal is animal self is there with that will to live because now totally identified with the body it sees itself as the body so it wants the body to continue and it has this will to live but as you as the self evolves and it takes on the it associates with the human body now the self has more possibilities it is awakened to a few more activities in the b2 block and it has the potential to awaken to the activities in the b1 block here even though the sensitivity to the you know the sensation is there through the sense organs of the body but here feeling also becomes important or more important than the self of the animal and therefore you have not just wanting to live but to live with happiness and therefore there is this trying to get the right feeling from the other and um on the one hand there is the identification with the body but on the other hand that is not sufficient and so the this confusion between the two leads to the problem whereas in the animal it is so well defined the identification with the body that there is no problem and so the conduct is very definite but in the human being now because the self is little more advanced and it is not sufficient to just go with the sensation through the body therefore now it becomes a problem because the self wants to live with happiness in continuity and that is not possible through the body so we ask you to reflect on these thoughts and or any quick reflections we'll take a few and then we'll go forward good morning didi good morning everyone uh, didi uh, that, that is being said that 
self, uh, an evolved self, needs a human body to express itself because not it is an not evolved, enough. Not an evolved yeah. self, but yeah. in the process of evolution. So, how do we uh, do we see that uh, that self? Suppose, uh, like before, uh, like in Darwin's theory, like it is evolution of that physical uh, that body also, like from ape to the journey mm -hmm. of ape to man. So mm -hmm. the brain is it is said in science the brain is developed uh, gradually getting developed and then uh, we stopped using the tail. So. Mm -hmm. uh, in the process of evolution of the self. So which body, like already we do not, ha did not have a full, fully developed human body. So the body also went through evolution. So mm -hmm. initially, the association of self and human body that I'm unable to uh, see clearly, like because we didn't have a ready human body, uh, for a evolved self so what have, uh, has been happening like is it happening parallelly to complement yeah. each other see yes. um, I mean, we were not there to see but uh, yes. as far as my understanding goes you know we tend to look at things one after the other in sequence that first this happened then this happened then this happened but what is being said is that this is all an expression of coexistence and it is there. Existence was there, is there, will be there. And this is an unfolding of the expression of coexistence. So it is happening at various levels. So like for instance, the physical order is there. There is the, the bio order. Now in the bio order, we said that the similar uh, to the bio order is animal body and the human body have the same characteristics, but more complexity. So now, as a part of this unfolding of the coexistence, the way I see it is, it is unfolding, it's happening. As a progression, you can see slowly more and more and more complexity. You can see it. If you look at the four orders, you see this complexity increasing as you go from one order to the next. And so also in the self. So it is all happening as a progression. And so, um, you know, at some point, as part of the unfolding of the coexistence, you had the consciousness unit, the cell, when it got uh, sort of the body of the animal seemed too limited for its growth, for its evolution. Then this so happened that it took on the animal body. But it's like saying, you know, how did it, how did the evolution of all these organisms start? So many things are happening um, sequentially, but we are seeing them also in parallel. No, like you have, uh, you know, the physical order. Now in the physical order, say you put, you know, you have your ata and things like that. This, you can see, for ladies, it will be easy to see this, that you keep your grain. The grain is only physical order, no? But yes, while yes. keeping storing for a long time, you know, in certain conditions, say when moisture is there, humidity is there, organisms form in this. So you have bugs or what you call, you know, yes, some, yes, some things creep up. Now you would say, how does that form? Well, this is all part of the unfolding of coexistence, how it happens, you know, it is uh, 
just by virtue of being there in space and having this, you know, as things develop, as things unfold, it goes to from a lower to higher progression and it is happening. So it is happening, I mean, I see it happening parallelly. But if we go back and see, you know, when it was first happening, then again we are going to say that existence was not always there, but it has developed over time. But that's not what we are saying, which is different a little bit from, say, the Darwin's theory or what we are talking about today, na? or um, say things like the Big Bang theory and things like that. So. What is being said here is that existence was there, it is there, it will be there, and we just need to understand it. But I guess, you know, if we still have questions about it, and of course, there is no way to be certain till um, we are able to see things directly. So we can keep it open. Okay. Uh, the, uh... I don't know much about uh, uh, our uh, mythology or religious literature, but the Shavatara uh, was just coming to my mind that uh, a lower level creatures, that evolution, so starting from a uh, mean uh, fish, the water creature, in uh, evolution also, physical evolution, we see that those creatures were born first. So gradually other uh, a little more uh, developed features mm -hmm. came to the to this mm -hmm. art. So and reaching to Sri Ram, uh, like Buddha, Buddha, so that uh, self and body, like human form, then Rama, Sri Krishna, Buddha. So evolution of the body as well as self, as if that progression I could see in that story. What we see yeah, can it may be depicting. You know, the evolution as is, meaning right from the smallest life form to the most complex. And in the more complex also, you have what they call, you know, the avatars with aggression. So the angry man or, you know, the narsimha avatar and so on. How I see it is when the self is uh, less evolved what we call animal consciousness, then it will have those kind of characteristics. And as the self becomes more evolved, then it develops more peaceful characteristics and so on. No? Yeah. So maybe if uh, the self becomes less and less aggressive, then the uh, like uh, this, uh, we don't need the sharp nails and sharp teeth. Yeah. So those yeah. get uh, like in the evolution, maybe like yeah. yes, yes. Rather than use the word aggression becomes less, I would prefer to say becomes more peaceful. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Didi, namaste, Didi. Namaste. Sabiko, namaste. Didi, as information is, I am able to get the concepts. But how to observe in our day-to-day -day living, Didi? For example, let me give a small example, Didi. So today morning, as soon as the alarm rang, the first thought was, yes, let me sleep for some more time. So there I could see, yes, my mind is playing the role of sensation. So it wants to lie down for a few more minutes but immediately I could also observe that myself deciding no no there is a purpose I have to get up like that I am getting up so in all these like day-to-day -day activities we just guide us Didi how to connect to that purpose I am getting yes now I want to listen to the session so that is the purpose but how to connect to higher orders like right understanding how to connect to coexistence? See, what have we been doing with the exercises? What have we been doing? This is what we are trying to do, na? 
what we are saying is it is already there there's nothing to do for the coexistence it is that to understand it that's all when it comes to the self you have the possibility you have the need to know so therefore just going to this sensation is not sufficient for you yeah so uh, what i'm saying is that throughout our focus has been on what is my role what do i need to do and we have been saying time and again that for the existence i don't need to do anything but i need to understand the coexistence the way it is i need mm. to understand that the first three orders are already you know having definite conduct because that's how the existence is now it is only mm. the human being that needs to shape up and get in line what you mentioned today when you wake up on the one hand you want to continue with the sensation mm. right but on the other hand you see this higher purpose mm. Mm. so you choose that mm. what we were saying you know the self in the human being is little more evolved than in the animal so on the one hand it still assumes itself to be body and has all those um you know trying to seek happiness through the sensation but on the other hand it also has a need to know so it has to make that choice can you see uh, that is clear didi but uh, like like these small activities i am unable to connect to that coexistence and space little effort i have to make no didi to go and now i am able to see the purpose yes but i am unable to connect to the, i am unable to feel that coexistence uh, how will you feel how will you how will you experience a reality that is so subtle that you don't have the competence to see it yet no you can only talk about it in words we can only have thoughts about it but to observe it directly it will take time you have to accept that mm-hmm. isn't it there are people who have reached up to that point and so will be eventually all of us will but with this process we are just trying to enhance make it happen a little faster but at the same time we need to be able to see that it is a slow process it is unfolding now you say that you know why that plant i put the seed in the ground why it's not coming up why it's not coming we don't do that because mm-hmm. we have seen time and again that it takes time mm-hmm. so we don't start looking for the shoot right the very next day we wait because we know that it takes time mm-hmm. so similarly here also it takes time this wanting to see now this is also a reaction because it's there in my thoughts and i want that i should be able to see it right now just like i am seeing these other things through my gross eyes but you have to remember that i can't see those things through the gross eyes those kind of realities that are too subtle for what to see through the body i can't see so i have to develop my competence to be able to see directly through the self and just like it may have been little frustrating in the beginning that i can't see my thoughts i can't see my feelings what do people keep talking about feeling feeling i can't see the feeling that part can be a little frustrating but as we kept working slowly we are able to see so this will also happen but it takes time it's a slow process and it will eventually happen i have to just keep with the process and the process is the same what we are doing in the exercises isn't it okay uh, didi let me little bit uh, briefly uh, share my uh, observation didi didi at some times uh, i am able to feel that i am having the feeling of opposition no. at that time i am 
working at the thought level no 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 this is wrong you have to have a feeling of uh, relationship you have to do like this so in the thought level i am working on myself similarly i just want to know at thought level how to see that coexistence actually uh, that was my question didi so at least small step i have to take to feel that coexistence this is the fact to to uh, change there is nothing to do there is nothing to do you have to work on yourself only when you work on yourself that competence will develop you don't have to try to see the coexistence now when you can't see it yeah i'm working on myself we've been about it we've been thinking about it we have been talking about it but unlike what you have to do when you interact with you know the other um unit so where you have to have you have to see that you know when i have feeling of opposition i am disturbed i am unhappy when i have feeling of relationship i am comfortable now when it comes to the space when it comes to the coexistence there's not much for you to do except to just be able to see it and to live according to it for that you need to develop the competence in the self isn't it it's like saying when i put the seed i don't want to put the manure i don't want to put the water i don't want to see whether the sunlight is there or not i just want the fruit well you know you have to go through the process only then will you get the plant to come up and the tree to form and eventually the fruit will happen it will come but it will happen in a natural unfolding you can't make it happen earlier this is what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say so no, no need you can you can make also. the effort you can make the effort you can improve your own competence but just because i want to see it now i won't be able to see it now unless i am also making the effort to awaken to the higher activities so it happens step by step oh, i am okay. having trouble with the activity of contemplation with my relationship and i want to be able to see the coexistence it will not happen oh. it will happen step by step oh jee jee okay dude that clear dude thank you thank you so much dude ma'am this uh, what is the actual difference between activity and natural characteristics means para participation oh. and uh, other than this respiration for example in uh, plant uh, reproduction water absorption uh, where all those activities will be uh, given see water absorption taking things from the soil this is all recognition and fulfillment when two units are involved when there is interaction between two units then you are talking about the natural characteristic the participation of the units in the interaction no uh, so the, when the focus is on the participation then you are this is the natural characteristic but any activity you see the two are kind of linked can you see that activity by itself you know there will be many activities going on in the cell when two cells come together they participate Oh. there is some exchange something is happening this is recognition and fulfillment this is the natural characteristic the participation yeah but uh, that word is not given recognition and fulfill uh, fulfilling we have been saying that uh, being in coexistence in space there are three characteristics every unit is active it has energy it is self organized no okay. is having uh, activities in a very well defined manner and it is recognizing its relationship and fulfilling its relationship with every other unit this we have been saying from the beginning yes now when we, the terms are changed and that is uh, your terms have not changed this is just detail about the orders the difference in the four orders the progression how oh. we are 
moving from some smaller activity to more and more complex activity like in the physical order there is formation deformation in the bio order in addition to that there is respiration this is what we are saying no in addition to the existence there is growth so like this we are showing in this four orders it is showing the progression uh, uh, actually only respiration coexistence yeah other than respiration something else also must be supporting it exist its existence no ma'am or growth yeah. growth yes only but then we are trying to show a difference between the two the important thing to see here is to see that there is a slow progression that is happening okay okay this is the unfolding of the you can say the coexistence so you see more and more and more complexity now all the details of the complexity we are not going into but the major feature that is different that has been highlighted okay okay uh, thank you ma'am by virtue of being in this submergence all these units if you look at the physical order there is a definite self organization there is a definite form there is a definite activity that is there na no? in the soil in the air in the water in all the physical order units there is a definite participation in the larger order so you find things are happening in a very well defined manner nothing is suddenly happening so you can see that um we talk about that iron piece of iron no it exists it continues to exist now it may change the form but it is still existing in some form you take water we talked about water also no now it may break down into hydrogen and oxygen may change the form property may change but it still exists and things happen in a definite manner it's not that suddenly some other um, combination makes water isn't it water tends to flow you know from say higher to lower no it is always like this it doesn't go the reverse way so some things you can notice that things are happening in a very definite manner there is even the interaction between the units that you see there is a very definite participation in the larger order it's not that suddenly something changes and things are happening randomly if you look at it i mean if you go beyond the form and the property when it comes to the form and the property so many changes are happening so you feel like uh, nothing is constant but if you look beyond the form and the property if you look at these characteristics which are there by virtue of being in submergence the innateness the natural characteristic you will find that things are happening in a very well defined well organized manner the conduct of all the units is very definite so this is also an expression of the submergence of this coexistence then if you look at the bio order here also now we if we look at the innateness the self organization so while in the physical order we said it just exists there's no growth in the case of the bio order there is growth so you see you can see the trees the plants the form you know increases in size you have cells within the bio order the cells increase in size they also multiply no 
so more cells can be formed. All this is happening in a very well-defined manner. So somebody asked uh, that what about tumors and things? So here also if you see, now you know, we, we may not have all the answers in science right now, but a lot has to do with the self. So if the self creates disharmony in the body, then things can go wrong. But by and large, if you look at the body, the body is a very self-organized unit. Things happen in a very well-defined manner. But when we don't understand this, and we don't take responsibility for the body, we don't see the significance or we don't even acknowledge the presence of the self, then we make mistakes, we make, uh, you know, we create disharmony in the body many a time. So when you have emotions like strong anger, hatred, jealousy, of course it has impact on the body. It can lead to disharmony in the body. So that is one possibility we should keep in view. But if you look at, you know, small babies when they are born, by and large, for the most part, you will find babies are born healthy, except for an occasional, you know, small um, percentage where the, you may have problem. But by and large, babies are born healthy. You look at the male-female ratio when babies are born. It is by and large being maintained. How is it maintained? It is all part of the self-organization as part of the expression of the coexistence. So this definite self-organization is already there. And there is a definite participation in the larger order. So some things, like if you see the participation, now, um, you know, you eat something, say plants, no? so they will have a definite participation. You will find some plants nurture the body. Some plants don't nurture, they worsen the body. That doesn't keep changing. Also, you will notice that, you know, some, some forms, um, say the plant that you consume, say it is deteriorated, but it has resulted in the nurturing of the body. So you see, you see this in all of nature. Say a dewdrop or water falls on the plant. The dewdrop dissolves, but it nourishes the plant. So you will find this nurture and worsen characteristic is there. And this is happening also in a very well-defined manner. It doesn't suddenly change. It doesn't suddenly happen that spinach, which was nurturing for the body, now it becomes poisonous. Or dhatura, a plant that is poisonous, suddenly starts nurturing the body. It doesn't happen like that. It is, things are happening in a very well-defined manner. So this is the recognition and fulfillment which is happening by virtue of this natural characteristic. The participation of one unit with the other unit in a very well-defined manner. Uh, Ma'am, not the body cannot exist uh, uh, for all time. No, it will die. And this is this reproduction is an ability and activity through which it uh, can maintain its race, isn't it? So that is a very important activity, isn't it? No, but the stone care will remain uh, so. But uh, our body will die, and that is an important activity. Why that is uh, not mentioned anywhere in this uh, material? Always been mentioning the body is temporary. There is material unit. There is consciousness unit. Uh, okay. Okay. Body is temporary, and how then uh, the human race will continue, or human, or uh, plant, or uh, animal? So the when the body is there, that function is happening, isn't it? The reproduction is only in a particular time span in the body. It doesn't happen in childhood, doesn't happen in old age, yeah. uh, isn't it? Uh, yeah. But that, that is a very important activity. And as you go from 
say the plant you know the bio order as you go from less complex to more complex we find the same characteristics in the animal body and the same characteristics in the human body but more complex ah. hmm. more complex so you will find even in animals there is reproduction but as you go you know there will be so much variety no some animals they have they give birth through egg form outside there are some who are you know, the mammals and so on that classification we can keep going there will be lot of form lot of a uh, uh, lot of variety in the form mm. but we are looking at the the essence right now Mm-hmm. the variety the form we have been talking about through science but then we are missing some things like for instance we have not talked at all about the self now that yeah. is totally put aside but that yeah. is extremely important we say reproduction yes. is important the body is important certainly but that decision making the entire uh, instruction giving to the body who is doing that so we must address those so if you look at the essence you find mm-hmm. that these characteristics we have given baki lot of variety is there certainly no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. always happening is respiration yes and then some uh, here the some plants it is seed based some plants uh, uh, continues from uh, leaves or uh, roots or uh, the stem etc so why that seed based word is given because if you see in the seed if you change the quality of the seed seed can be uh, a leaf or a, uh, that is the way we should interpret to tamper with the seed no for the the plants if when we grow them with seed if you tamper with the seed it will change the whole inheritance pattern so for instance we gave the example of papaya so papaya when you are growing it with the original seeds that were there that nature provided you could see that papaya has each papaya seed gives rise to so many papayas and every papaya has so many seeds if you recall when you cut open the papaya in the olden times you would find it was full of seeds you recall mm-hmm. that Yes, yes. Hmm. Today you are having hybrid papayas largely. Hmm. Today, if you cut open a papaya, you find hmm. only hardly one or two seeds. Hmm. Now we have changed the seed because we changed the constitution of the seed. The whole inheritance pattern has changed. Hmm. So we are, you know, when we don't understand these things, we create more problem in nature. but if we understood this then we would try to maintain that seed so this is from that perspective that we are looking at it let us look at the the animal uh, order so there also you will see by virtue of the submergence the body part is similar to the bio order just more complexity is there so same way there is pulsation there is respiration there is growth all those characteristics are same in the body if you look at the self the self of the animal like we were talking earlier it has sensitivity to these five sense organs of the body this is because it is uh, you know totally identified with the body so it it also has this is an expression of the coexistence it is able to sense this this sensation so its focus is largely on the sense organs of the body what sensation it can get from there so what we say you know the self is um awakened only to the activity of selecting tasting so now these animals in the self of the animal 
there is a will to live in I, in the self. This will to live, again you will see that association with the body, that it is very strongly identified with the body and therefore it, with this will to live, it wants the body to survive because it thinks it's the body. That assumption is very strong. And the awakening of the activities is also minimal, what we call selecting tasty. If you see the participation with other units, you find that what we call, they are either cruel or non-cruel. Those terms we are using, although in, in the coexistence, you know, there is nothing like cruel or non-cruel, but you will find that there are some types of animals, like we were mentioning yesterday also, that are more peaceful, calm, like um, the cow. Then there are some animals which are very ferocious, very aggressive, like the tiger, the lion, and so on. These characteristics you will see in the participation also, you can see this. And here the inheritance is breed-based. So depending on the breed, certain characteristics are there. Um, so therefore, you know, if you don't tamper with the breed, the characteristics will stay definite. But if we don't understand this, we tamper with the breed, then there can be problems. We can create problems. Like we talked of earlier, we had talked of, um, say, the indigenous breeds of cows. So the Swiss brown or the Indian desi cow, the natural breeds, the, the pure breeds, they have these, uh, you know, the milk that they give, which is now being referred to as A2 milk, that milk is nourishing for the human body. But if you see um, those that are not pure breeds, like for instance, the Jersey cow, the milk that that provides is not nurturing for the body. It's not nourishing for the body. It actually creates problems. It has been linked to heart disease and hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis, and those kind of problems. So now you can see the difference between a pure breed and a breed that is uh, cross or something that is not the indigenous, the natural breed. So therefore you need to maintain the breed in order for the characteristics to stay the same, in order for the conduct to remain definite. So now, if you look at the human being, now in the four orders, now this fourth order, the human being, if you look at that, the body part, similar to the bio order, but with more complexity, like we said. And if you look at the self, in the self of the human being, now this self is little more evolved than the self of the animal. Here you see, on the one hand, the assumption that I am body, but on the other hand, that is not sufficient because now the feelings are becoming more prominent. So now I want to live, not just live, I want to live with happiness and I want to live with happiness all the time. And this is not possible through the body. So now there is confusion. Now the conduct becomes indefinite. But in the self of the human being, that possibility to know is there, which was not there in the case of the animal self. Now this is a little more evolved. So one is that not just selecting, tasting, we are also awakened to imaging, analyzing, comparing, you know, those activities in the B2 block. But also we have the potential to know. We have the potential to go all the way to the highest activity in the uh, self, which is the activity of realization. 
and be able to understand, to be able to see the existence the way it is directly. This possibility is there. And so if once we do that, what we call having the right understanding, with that we are able to have the right feeling all the time. So we can be in happiness in continuity. And we have all these feelings of, you know, compassion, feeling of kindness, yeah. bravery, perseverance, generosity, this we talked of. So this possibility is there in the self. And how are we going to reach that? In the case of the animal, remember we talked of inheritance being breed-based. In the human being, it is about education and sanskar. This education and sanskar is what is deciding whether my conduct will be definite or indefinite, whether I understand things or I don't understand. It is not about the breed. It is not about what we call genetics. So two people with the same genetics who are twins, if they are put in different settings and one is given this right education and sanskar and the other is not, then you will see the difference in conduct, even though they have the same genetic material. So there you can see the significance of the inheritance pattern of how we can have definiteness in conduct and then how we can go further and continue it generation after generation so that we can uh, have this human education sanskar become a tradition so that it follows from this generation to the next generation to the next generation so that you can have definiteness of human conduct throughout. And all of this, you can see, all of this expression of the four orders, this is by virtue of the submergence, the submergence of all these units in space. So let us look into our own natural characteristic innateness and coexistence or submergence. So, Try to ask yourself, which feeling is natural for you in your relationship with other human beings? So you are checking with your natural acceptance. Now here you will find this is part of your self-organization, isn't it? This feeling of affection or jealousy, respect or disrespect, care or exploitation, guidance or misguidance. So you will notice that this is already set up for you. This is already defined. What is naturally acceptable for you or what is your true nature? That is a certain way. But you have also been given the choice. You can choose to go along with it or you can choose to be not in line with it. But this is also certain that when you are not in line with it, then you are bound to be unhappy. This is part of your, all this is part of your self-organization. This is also an expression of coexistence in the human self. Similarly, in the second part, explore as to what is natural feeling for you in your relationship with your body. Feeling of nurturing or exploitation of the body, protecting the body or otherwise. Rightly utilizing or misutilizing. And you will find what is naturally acceptable is very definite. It is the same for all. It doesn't change. But we have the choice and when we don't understand, we make wrong choices which are not in line. And therefore, our interaction with the body is not so well defined. So we have um, indefinite conduct with the body. We may not take responsibility. We may not help to nurture or protect the body. We have the choice, but when we lack understanding, we tend to make wrong choices or it is possible for us to make wrong choices. 
therefore we need to understand and then in the last thing third thing explore as to what is natural feeling for you in your relationship with physical facility feeling of enrichment or exploitation protection or otherwise right utilization or misuse utilization again same thing what is naturally acceptable you find is well defined this is an expression of the coexistence this is your self organization but whether we understand it or not whether we go in line with it or not that is the work that at hand that is at hand that we have to do so that is our task so we need to do that kita ji was asking the question how to experience that coexistence how to see it so if we do all this these tasks we are slowly moving the step forward to awaken to the higher and higher activities till we can um, actually see the coexistence the space directly namaste namaste to all Mm, let us take the same example spinach and uh, these days for protecting it from the pesticide i mean pests and worms uh, we use pesticide mm -hmm. pesticide yeah yeah and uh, by virtue of that it creates problem in the body so yes. in that case Uh, if we do not use that, then there is we cannot get spinach. Let us take take for granted. Or so in that case, what to be done? So yeah, there are many ways. You know, in the natural farming, many ways are there. If you see in in the farm, if you have a cow and you have you know you are growing some vegetables and all, and the cow will not only provide you milk, but the cow urine the cow dung it can be used to um in fact uh, you know formulations are there by which you can nurture the plants using these this is a very natural form this, there is no pesticide in this and you will find that the plants actually thrive they are nourished they do very well so you don't need pesticides you don't need um, those kind of things you can have very natural um, things like neem for instance so neem oil neem sprays those things are available which are not harmful for plants or for the human body but uh, they can actually um, do the job yes yes thank okay. you thank you um, thank you didi for such an enriching session